the, new, the Sunday School Ministry of the New Ebenezer Baptist Church at 6300 Hartford Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, where the Reverend Dr. Wallace R. Mills, Jr. is our pastor on this Sunday, December 5th, 2021. Please join us each Sunday morning at 910 for our Sunday School lesson presentation, which will be followed directly at 10 a.m., our morning, Sunday morning worship. Today we are in lesson one of unit one of the winter quarter. Our title is God Requires Justice. Our adult and young adult topic, the protection of justice. Our youth topic, protect it. Our children's topic, do what is right. Our background scripture is coming from Deuteronomy chapter 5, Deuteronomy chapter 10, chapter 27, chapter 28, verses 1 and 2. Our devotional reading is coming from Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Our printed scriptures for our today's lesson is coming from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, 1b, through verse 3, chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, and chapter 27, verses 1 through 10. Our today's presentation will be given by Sister Lillian Cunningham. So let us prepare for our lesson by gathering our pens, our papers, our tablets, and our phones, whatever we use for studying on today as we prepare to receive God's word. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Blessed and eternal Father, we come on this morning, Father God, simply just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for the traveling graces that you have provided to us as we come to your house one more time on this first Sunday in December 2021. Father God, let our minds, our hearts, and our spirits be open to receive your word on today, Father God, so that we can be better for it. These and all things we ask in thy son, Jesus Christ's name, for which we pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Cunningham. Thank you, Sister Bridget, and good morning to everyone. All right, again, our subject is justice and obedience to the law. Uh, again, Deuteronomy chapters 5, 1 through 3, chapters 27, 1 through 10. Our devotional reading, Matthew 22, uh, 36 through 40, these verses speak on to love God wholeheartedly first and to give and to love your neighbors also. We have a subtitle for this uh, uh, lesson as well, and the subtitle is called to obey God's perfect and just law. Amen. I just like you to know that Deuteronomy is the fifth book written of Moses. Uh, and a little bit more background again. Moses, as we get into this lesson, is speaking to the children of the original Israelites who were participants of the great exodus out of the Egyptian bondage. Their parents, as you know, died in the wilderness because of their disobedience to God and they did not get to cross over to the promised land. So here we go, Deuteronomy, I'd, I'd like to read the verses, read along with me. If you don't have a Sunday school book, please turn to Deuteronomy 5 in your Bible. First verse. Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and keep them and do them, the Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, remember that, but with us, the present children of Israelite, even us who are all of us here alive this day. This is Moses and the Levite priests who have called the children of Israel together to give them God's in instructions and to inform them of the covenant God has made with the younger generation of Israel 
which is not the one he made with the older generation who had died in the wilderness. Amen. And then we're going to go down to 12. It skips, but I pray that you have read, you know, all of the chapters of the lesson. 12 says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Amen. Moses tells the people of what God requires of him, <coughs> excuse me, of them, to keep his commandments and his statutes, to keep his laws, to fear God, not to be afraid of him like you're scared, but to respect who he is Amen. and to respect his holy authority for who he is and to obey and live by his word. Moses tells them that living according to God's law is a benefit. Can we say benefit? Benefit. And for their own good. It's good to be obedient to God's word and his purposes. Let us remember that in, in uh, 2021. It is good to be obedient to God's word and his purposes. All right. Amen. Amen. Um, let's go over now to Deuteronomy 27, 1 through 10. I'm going to read that. Read along with me, please. And Moses with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day, and it shall be on the day when you shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest... I'm sorry... Go in, go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey. This is the promised land that God had, uh, promised them. As the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan, ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones that, thou, that thou, thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of the whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God, and thou shalt offer peace offerings, and thou shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, which we, we know hearken means to listen, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. If thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Take heart and listen and notice that you have become the people of God again. So he has, has uh, welcomed them back and he has embraced them back and know as a point to when the Lord uh, calls you this people, that means he's angry at you. But when he calls you my people, okay. that means he's, he's loving you and he, you're in his good graces. So Moses and the elders are instructing the people of Israel, Israel to keep all God's commandments that God told them that day. Here Moses tells the people of God's instructions on what he wants them to do once they cross over Jordan into the promised land that God gave his people. Here they are commanded to build stone altars in Mount Ebal and plaster them. They are uh, Moses instructed the people that God
commanded them to build a stone altar unto the Lord thy God of whole stones. There was a reason for the whole stones. Uh, to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord God. They were not permitted to, to, to use any tool of iron to construct these altars. They were instructed to offer peace offerings, rejoice. They were to rejoice because they had made it over. I thought about that song, how I got it over. My soul looked back and wondered. And they didn't, I didn't got over. They have uh, made it over to the promised land. And he wants them to rejoice and to eat and to drink in the presence of the Lord for what he has done for them. The people were to write all the words of the law plainly on the stones uh, that they had set up. Write it out. Let the, let the others see how we have come over out of bondage. And here it is. The Lord has brought us successfully over to the promised land. So let us discuss now, because I want to discuss why God said use whole stones to build the altar and not an iron tool. The building of the stone altar or high place, the altar is the high place, represents the divine and eternal structure and strength of God's presence. Iron represents an object that will rust, decay, disintegrate over time. But here, the stones represent that God is eternal. God is divine. He will never change or go away. He will not disintegrate. He will not rust. God is forever. He is for all time, and the altars could not be built with an iron tube because it doesn't represent strength. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 27, 9 to, 10 of, 9 to 10 of the lesson states, Moses and the Levite priests tell the Israeli people to be still and to listen. So if one says, we don't use that now, hearken. I want you to hearken, but when you hearken, we want you to listen. Get still, get quiet. And listen, because the Lord is speaking to you. Okay. And to listen for this day, you have become the people of the Lord thy God. Mm. You have become the people of the Lord thy God. Amen. Amen. You must obey the voice of the Lord and follow his commandments and statutes that I have given you today. God kept his promise right. to the people. Now the people must keep their promise and be committed to the Lord God uh, as his people. But we know down through the, through the Bible, the Israelites did sin against God or what have you. But we talk about right now where God's saying, you're my people. And there's an example I just got there too of how we, as God's people, we do sin. But God, uh, because he loves us, he will punish us. He was, as uh, the old folks said, whip our behinds, straighten us out. Mm. And then we say, oh, Lord, we're sorry, and we're going to stay on the road. Right. But knowing that God will get back on the right road, knowing that God is forever present, and he forever loves us, he's never going to change. But you want as best you can in this lifetime to stay on that committed and just and obedient Road, amen. Amen. amen, amen. So we must follow His commandments and His statutes, and we uh, must stay committed. If you love the Lord, if, the, if you have a relationship with the Lord, and He is in your life, you're going to try 100 percent to be obedient to His word. You're going to try. You're going to fail in some things because you're human. And you're going to get weak along the way. That's understandable as well. But you have a lifeline. You have an anchor. Yes, all right Come now. Come on. All right I, I got I to say Come something on. about our conference. Yeah. Our conference yesterday, and uh, Sister Cece showed us a, a, an example of the anchor. And if you've seen an anchor, right. it's a cross. It's all a right. cross. And then on the bottom, it got hooks. And when you drop the anchor, 
those hooks are going to grab on to what's on the bottom. So that's God. We grab, oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. Right? Amen. Oh. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Say, so yes, your anchor got to hold. Oh, I know I didn't get a little off the lesson, but glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. You need that anchor. You so and it. in your commitment, that's your anchor yes, to the Lord. Oh, I am so happy because I, I glory, hallelujah. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, so we have got to be committed and we have got to love the Lord and make sure that your anchor holds. And again, um, you've heard that... Uh, the saying, as Christian followers, we must be just in our dealings and faithful in our deportment. Now, the subject of our lesson says uh, justice and obedience to the law. But you've heard that saying, some of us, or maybe the older ones have heard it, to be just in your dealings and faithful in your deportment. Now, if you read 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 12 in your Bible, this will be some some Bible study time for you. I'm not going to read those 12 verses. In that passage, in those 12 verses, at the top it's titled, Living to Please God. Why are we Christians? Are we Christians just to say we're Christians, but we are living to please who? God. To please God. So if you read 1 Thessalonians, uh, it will further enlighten you, uh, um, us, the followers of faith, to be just, because that's what it's talking about, to be just and obedient to the word of God. So let us be just and obedient to God's law as our license, our lesson is titled. Know that Christianity is not just a title, but it is a lifestyle. To be a follower of Christ, it is a lifestyle. And it's good, and I just love Bible study. It is good to get in the Word. It is good to meditate on the Lord. It is good to see what His commandments and His statutes are. How can you go out and evangelize if you don't know what God's Word says? So again, Bible class is important. Sunday school is important. Reading your word, cutting off your, your, your TV or what have you. Cause they don't have the stories on no more. They only got one story on, and that's General Hospital. So <laughs> you can give the Lord some time. Amen. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, pastor, pastor said, if you get out, when you wake up your eyes open, you should thank be saying, you. thank you, Lord. Thank when your feet hit the floor, Thank you should you. be saying, Thank you, Jesus. Because he has given you another opportunity yes, to yes. go out and to give him praise and to glorify and to love your brothers and your sisters. We got to do what he says, but you got to read God's word. Amen. That's like going to school and never picking up your book. Uh, then what you're going to do? You're going to fail that class because you don't know what the subject is. You don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be failures, failed Christian, bench, uh, pew Christians. We want to know God's word. Amen. We want God's word to live in us. Amen. Then when it lives in us and the Holy Spirit is in us, hallelujah, you're going to bubble up. The Holy Spirit is going to bubble up and that lights go shine. Amen. And we want to be shiny Christians. That in a dark place, they can say, oh, she's shining for the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. I do get excited. I just thank God for Jesus, and it is such a blessing. Uh, so our lesson is saying to know God's word and to know God for yourself. Because this is personal. This is personal. Your relationship is personal with him. And so I just love how Moses and the Levites uh, uh, priests called everybody together and said, this is what the Lord said. And you, I want you to incorporate that into your vocab vocabulary. This is what the Lord say, do not what Lily and Cunningham say, but what the Lord say. You say, God said do this. God said don't do that. And then don't be afraid because God said, don't fear their faces because I'm right here. Right. 
and just go out and tell the world how good God mm -hmm. is. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. I am done. I have, my anchor is in the water. I didn't drop my anchor. <laughs> And I didn't grip the solid rock. That's, oh, oh my, God. my God, my God, and God is that, ah, yeah. is that solid rock, is that solid rock. And on that, uh, my sisters and brothers, we take this time to offer Christ to you. Amen. So if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins and you want to give your life to Christ, we ask that you contact the New Ebenezer Baptist Church where you can speak with our pastor, Pastor Wallace Mills, who will have prayer with you, who will talk to you. They have a great minister staff as well. There are persons uh, that you can talk to and pray with, and they can talk to you about giving your life to Christ. That's the best place to be, in the safety and the arms of Jesus. And then as you grow, you get uh, in God's, grace and you come to church and you give your life to Christ, you can get into your studies and prayer time and you know God is good and if God has ever visited you, it's an experience that you will never forget. Am I right? Amen. All right. Amen. If you connect it to the source, you will get a big burst of electricity of the Holy Spirit bursting in on you and it is just a blessing to be with Christ. And so we want us to be just, and we want to be obedient to God's word, and we want to live this Christian life. Amen, amen. And, and I'm done. Give your life to God. Amen. Give it to him. That's the only thing I can give you. I can't give you money. I can't give you nothing. But I can tell you that God is, and God is your way amen. to salvation. And once you get him in your life, that's the best decision you have ever made. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for Christ is waiting on you with out, outstretched arms. Amen. God is good. I love Bible class. I love to study God's word. I hope that you continue and get into that word and dig deep because there's a whole bunch of more points in every lesson that the Holy Spirit can bring out that you can even give me. Because I don't know it all, but I want to learn as much as I can about the Lord because I am a follower of Christ. And I, because I want to go to heaven in the morning. Amen. 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 And I want all my brothers and sisters with me as well. Amen. Thank you for your time. We love you. And we're going to turn it back over to Sister Melton. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Cunningham. You are so excited for the Lord. Um, I want to just ask that if you have made a decision, to give your life to Christ, please give us a call here at area code 313-361-0087 and let our pastor or one of our ministerial staff guide you with the decision that you have just made. It is always a blessing to give your life to Christ. Amen? Amen. Our next week's lesson, we are still being unit one. God's requ God requires justice. Our December 12, 2021 lesson, uh, David administers justice and kindness. Mm -hmm. Our background scripture will be coming from 2 Samuel chapter 9. Our devotional reading will be coming from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Our adult and youth adult, young adults lesson is the mercy of justice. Our youth topic is showing kindness. Our children's topic, promise and loyalty. And our printed passage for next week will be coming from 2 Samuel chapter 19, um, I'm sorry, chapter 9, verse 1 through 7, and verses 9 through 12. Please let us prepare for next week's lesson by reading in advance to receive the word of God. Amen. If our Sunday school has been a blessing to you, there are three ways that you can send in your offering. You can give through the Give the Fight app. Just go to New Ebenezer Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, or you can bring your offering directly down to the church, or you can mail it in at 6300 Hartford Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48210. Amen? After our closing prayer, please join us for our morning worship which will begin promptly at 10 a.m. 
Amen? Let us pray. O oh, glory and eternal Father, Lord God of all creation, may we remember that we do not live without your guidance and your direction. Blessed and eternal Father, grant that we will live giving praise and honor to your holy name. We bless you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. For this, we thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.